I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in Boca Raton, Florida for REITWISE 2014. Joining me is Judy Fryer, Principal Shareholder with Greenberg Trowick. Judy, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Matt. Now, I understand that, that you believe that there's parallels between the traded and the non-traded REIT industries. Can you elaborate on that thought a little bit? Of course. I've played in both spaces for a long time, traded and non-traded. And I've thought for many years that the non-traded was an incubator, not just for the traded REITs, but also for NAREIT. It creates new members for NAREIT, so I always thought NAREIT should be very supportive of the non-traded REIT world. Uh, can you expand a little bit on that concept uh, of the non-traded REITs as incubators? The non-traded REITs, as you probably know, are not perpetual life REITs, so they have some end game in mind. And in order to do that, they need an exit strategy. The exit strategies, the liquidity events can be listing or it could be merging or selling all their assets, but there needs to be some event. And frequently, at least initially, people thought, well, it was going to be a listing. And so when you think about it, it really is a perfect incubator for the traded REIT world if you have to take the non-traded and list them. What about some synergies that, that exist between the, the two spaces? I'm glad you asked about that. I, I have come to believe over the years as I watch these various exit strategies that not only are they incubators, but that the two spaces, traded and non-traded, are very synergistic. And I would even say symbiotic, because if you start to look at some of the transactions, um, they're really playing together very nicely in the sandbox. You look, you look at mergers, for example and you have mergers of non-traded into traded. A while back, you had CNL Retirement merging into HCP. You had, uh, let's see, Inland Retail merging into DDR, and more recently, you've had one of the ARC Trusts merging into Realty Income. But you've also had the reverse. You've had examples of traded merging into non-traded. I was involved a while back on um, RFS Hotels merging into CNL Hotels. So you've got them going both ways. You also have acquisitions. Um, for example, when CNL Hotels merged into a private Morgan Stanley REIT, a bunch of the portfolio was actually sold off to Ashford. And you've even got some hybrids going on there. For example, recently you had one of the coal REITs merge into Spirit, which was the traded REIT, but in fact it was really coal taking over Spirit. So you've had a little of everything. Now, do you expect that type of M&A activity to continue? Absolutely. Um, there's no doubt it will continue. In 2012, I think the liquidity events equaled about a little under $10 billion. Um, last year, it was $17 billion in liquidity events. And this year, Stanger is estimating probably closer to $20 billion in liquidity events. So based on the statistics, there's no doubt. Based on my own practice, I, my clients are presently involved in negotiations between traded and non-traded for those exit strategies. So I have absolutely no doubt that this synergy or symbiotic relationship is here to stay. And lastly, what about at the leadership or, or executive level? Is there sort of a cross-pollination there that you're seeing? I'm beginning to see some cross-fertilization. Um, recently, we've seen Jay Flaherty of HCP start a new initiative with North Star Healthcare. We've seen several of the people from the old equity office go over to one of the dividend capital REITs as the chairman and the CEO. So I'm starting to see that. I'm not sure that we'd call that a trend, um, but I think it's showing more um, acceptability of the non-traded space. And you even see other things going on. You see, for example, some of the traded REITs um, creating the non-traded. Now that was true of WP Carry for many years, but they weren't a REIT. Now, of course, they are a REIT, and they're still creating the non-traded. But you see it in Northstar. Northstar is a, Northstar Realty is a traded REIT, and they've created several um, non-traded REITs. So I think it's here to stay. I think you're going to see more and more of it, um, given. If you just talk about last year, the non-traded REIT industry raised almost $10 billion. That's new capital. It's got to go somewhere. Um, it leverages up. Even if it leverages at 50%, you're talking about a lot of capital going into very large portfolios. And it's not easy for the traded REITs to find portfolios like that that have already been accumulated and are just sitting there waiting for the taking. So I think this is a trend that's here to stay. Judy, thank you so much for joining us. 
My pleasure. For more from REITWISE 2014, be sure to visit REIT.com.